Hey guys, my name is Dr. Ben Tran. In this video, I wanted to cover how to use ChatGPT to write a systematic review article. And so for those of you who aren't completely aware, uh, ChatGPT has kind of taken the world by storm recently. It's this large language model that's been trained by AI scientists to actually be able to have human-like conversation. And it's basically like a smarter Google search, but it's really, really powerful. And so in this particular video, I wanted to cover how to use it to actually write a systematic review and to how to actually optimize that process for you. Um, and at the end of this video, I'm going to cover a little of the pros and cons from what I see from using it to actually write the systematic review that I did um, and a little bit of the ethical issues that I think surround this as well. And so if you like this sort of video and you like this sort of content, go ahead and hit the like button to subscribe below so that you can get more of this content. This is a research article that I wrote in med school and it took me forever. Um, I had to do a PubMed search from 2005 to 2019, looked at all these randomized control trials, all these abstracts, and all these sorts of things. And it took me a really long time. It actually took me like days to weeks to months. And so this is the product that I was able to make after about an hour of using ChatGPT. And so this generated the title, generated the abstract, and generated every single piece of it. The only things I added or edited were just a little bit of um, grammar things or just a little bit of structure. Um, but the most interesting thing that I found was that able to generate really, really good and accurate content for the most part. That doesn't necessarily mean that everything that ChatGPT generated was actually contextually correct, which I'll go on the pros and cons, but I thought that overall it was pretty, pretty darn good. And so in here we can see we have the introduction, we have covering every single type of intervention, particularly for wound care um, and keloids, hypertrophic scars, and surgical scars. And so this was able to generate all of this, and not only that, it was actually able to generate the citations that corresponded with it. So, for example, here we see that um, you know they're citing the the sources and the studies. This would be source seven. Um, this one they're citing it in this sort of format, and then I included everything that it generated actually into this manuscript that I would have thought that would be a version that I would be submitting to a journal, for example, and so. As I mentioned, it's actually really impressive that it can actually generate the references for you. And so these are actually going to be from PubMed, um, you know, and they're also citing other things that may not be as clinically relevant or scientifically uh, peer reviewed, but it's citing clinical trials as well, and even up to date. So that's just the power of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is limited in that it is only up to the year 2021. So any sort of scientific publications in PubMed or any other index journal is not going to have uh, that data in ChatGPT. So luckily for us, there's actually a new plugin that's been released. It's called, so if you go to the Chrome extensions, you go to the web chat GPT. And so I've already gone ahead and installed this. So you're going to have a different little bit of, but basically it's a plugin that's been added onto the Chrome extension so that it functions with chat GPT to be able to search the web. Um, and any, you could include the top three results at any time or any region. And I'll be showing this in actually uh, real practice and how to use this uh, later on. I'm trying to make sure that you have this plugged in and installed first before you get started. So when you first load up ChatGPT, this is what it's going to look like after you log in. Um, the interface is pretty simple. It's kind of like a chat bot with a message box in the middle. And then it also has, if you've already had the web ChatGPT plugin installed, you have the search on the web features on the bottom below. And so diving right in, if we want to ask it to summarize in 100 words what a systematic view article is. And then depending upon the uh, lag on the server, um, it will then punch out the, what ChatGPT believes uh, the answer to the prompt should be. And then so you can see that it can really specify the length of the words that you want to use and also that its wording and its phrasing is actually quite good. Um, and in the next part, if we try to ask it to write and outline how to it will then actually go ahead and type out the introduction, the methods, and the way that a systematic review should be done. And this is a really good, helpful way for us to think about how to actually use ChatGPT to approach um, writing a systematic review and being able to augment our current workflow that we currently use right now, and not necessarily just asking it to write it completely. then we can actually ask ChatGPT to actually write an outline for the systematic review that we want to do. In this particular case, we want to ask them to 
complete. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this in from before. So to please outline a um, essay reviewing the treatments in wound care for keloids, hypertrophic scars, and surgical scars, uh, focusing on these particular treatments um, in this uh, systematic review. And so let's see what it punches out. And so it's actually able to write the full introduction, the um, highlighted points beneath each one that we would like to do, um, and then also write each individual um, treatment that we're analyzing in the systematic review, which is actually just really amazing um, in that it's able to provide this level of depth. And this is before we actually start searching the web um, to see the most relevant research data articles. And then so now that we have this, all we have to do to actually go ahead and get started to write the actual contents, now that we have this background and introduction, is that we want to just take this information here and then just right here, please write the following, please elaborate the following, and then make it just paste that here, and then let's see what ChatGPT is able to generate from that. And so this is going to be basically be the introduction of our actual systematic review. And so now that we have all this actually all done, we can continue to do that for every single part. However, the most important part here is that whenever we're doing a systematic review, we're trying to review sometimes the most recent data that has been published within the past one year, for example. So that's where the web chat GPT extension comes in. And so we're basically able to actually search the web. And so, for example, if we wanted to just do uh, the next section, which is the use of silicone gel sheets, for example, in wound care and the effectiveness of this. And so if, we're able, if we write this and we say, please provide up to three publications published within the years 2021 to 2022 on so I actually kind of surprised myself. I put in this prompt, please provide up to three publications published within the years 2021 to 2022 on the effectiveness of silicone gel sheets in this actual study. And so ChatGPT is actually able to generate and actually summarize studies that were published in 2022 and 2021 as well. And so maybe this data is actually a little bit more up to date since 2021. However, with that being said, moving forward and as we continue to go on, um, the use of the web chat GPT extension could be really quite helpful. And so just to demonstrate how it works is we wanna click here on search the web. And so basically we wanna summarize 10 PubMed or scientific studies for the use of the silicone gel sheets in dermatology with a focus specifically on randomized controlled trials published between the years 2021 and 2022. And so after punching this in, let's see what happens. And I'll speed this up a little bit again, just for sake of time. And so basically when we look at what it actually punched out is it did a web search with, and it, it was able to pull articles from PubMed um, and then also our other journals and articles as well. And then also including Cochrane reviews. Um, and then at the bottom here, it instructs ChatGPT to actually use web searches and then to actually write a summary using the citations above. Since it didn't do that, we can actually ask ChatGPT to then do this in a format with citations. And so in order to do that without searching the web again, we actually have to turn off the web chat GPT extension so that we can write this. And so here we've kind of run into an issue in which ChatGPT was actually working on this great essay, 500 words. However, it stopped in the middle of a sentence. So if this ever happens, we could just say, continue the above sentence.
And while these annotations aren't exactly exact, we can actually use these to then search it and look at them up in the actual Google search. However, the also another way to get the citations is actually from here. Um, these also are all the citations that were previously used. We can then start to write the conclusion. And so in the outline above, um, we also had a little bit that, that was you can copy and paste directly from the outline. Or remember the initial prompt that we had, which was to outline in this essay review of the treatment of wound care and these particular treatments. And so if we wanted to use that, we could just punch that here and just write conclusion section. And so we can see here that again that this is a little bit on the shorter side and maybe we want to use a future research section as a different one looking particularly at um, the new web results um, and so here we can say elaborate on the above conclusion section to at least 300 words And so what we want to do, if we want to think about the future steps of research that are possible, it's more important to think about things that have been published within the last year, for example. Here we can specify within the past year. And so here we can see that it actually punched out some different treatment options that are being researched as well, such as um, injectables, botulinum toxin A, and also identifying genetic markers in keloid tissues and stem cell therapy as well. So now that that tutorial is over, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons using ChatGPT to actually write a systematic review. And so first and foremost, it's a really, really big time saver. It rapidly accelerates your outlining process, your brainstorming, and also your writing. And not only that, it actually writes pretty professionally as well. It can also provide some new insights into data analysis. So while there's a lot of different publications, a lot of different studies that are being included in the systematic review, chat GPT is actually able to tie some of these together in a way that I wouldn't have actually have thought about. And not only that, whenever they're even looking up new research areas, for example, in the conclusion section, even if it's a Google search and it's punching out things like new treatment areas that I haven't even heard about. It's actually really quick in doing so. And even though it would have taken me a while, I could have done the same thing on Google. This is just a much faster way to being able to do it and a much more concise way. And so it is also able to elaborate on the limitations or the interpretations of these studies, which is already included in the text, but it can compare these across all the different treatment arms that we're looking at. Um, so it doesn't also have to just do it at one, but also five different things. And it could do that all together really, really quickly. So I think that's a really good pro. And so some of the cons about using ChatGPT is first and foremost, it lacks customizability. And so whenever I'm doing a systematic review, I want to look at data that has been published in scientific um, studies that have been published within the last year, for example. And certainly as we go on from 2022 to 2023, just that is not built into ChatGPT currently. So we're unable to specify the years of publications that we really want going forward. And also this provides, uh, while web chat GPT is helpful and that provides a Google search, it doesn't search just PubMed and the clinical articles that we actually want. So sometimes it's pulling in blog posts that may not be scientifically peer reviewed. So that's not as helpful. And then also really importantly is that whenever you're actually doing a scientific review or a systematic review, you're actually learning a lot by reading these abstracts and reading the individual articles and learning how these studies were devised and potentially thinking about from a scientific standpoint, what are the limitations of these studies? And so you're not learning that whenever you're just using a chat bot to actually do it for you. Not only that, 
ChatGPT is sometimes also medically inaccurate. As we know, science moves very rapidly sometimes, and so ChatGPT is pulling from studies and drawing conclusions from certain studies while paying less attention to the studies that may be debunking those myths, for example. Uh, from a practical standpoint, the open AI server could be really slow just because it's a very popular tool to be using nowadays. Sometimes even to just film this video, for example, I had to wait like almost a few hours to be able to go on to chat GPT and open AI just because the server was so busy. And then last and potentially most importantly is the question, is this actually plagiarism and is this ethical? And I, and I think that this is currently a really big gray zone right now. Um, I know from some educational school standpoint, they do completely ban the use of ChatGPT to be able to help students write essays. But from a practical standpoint, if I was a, a researcher and I wanted to help get some suggestions on titles, for example, or help me um, write an abstract or get edits from an abstract from a colleague, that's going to be completely ethical. But if I'm doing that using an AI, and I don't actually do any modifications to what the AI is putting out, I think that would be considered plagiarism. And, you know, I think that over time, there's going to be some uh, professional bodies that are going to come together and write a best practices guidelines and suggestions on how to use AI. But at this time, I, I think that, you know, we're at a really big pivotal moment and it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out. But right now, it's currently really helpful to help generate outlines, brainstorming, and writing process overall so thanks so much guys for watching hopefully you found this video helpful if you did just go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below and then there will be some more videos coming out on how to use chat gpt if you're a resident or a medical professional as well thanks so much guys catch you next time